Oh, hello there. Welcome to First Kick Seahawks, the show where we prepare you for the first kick of every play by game day. And we use show notes. That's going to be important for the conversation we're going to have today. I am Camden McLaren. Typical YouTube in productions, inter- in productions, introductions. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. For every topic we are going to discuss today, as per usual, I have the links to that stuff in the description below. Also, if you would like to support the show, uh, I'm looking to hopefully buy either a better laptop or a better camera because my camera was stolen you can buy me a coffee there's a link to that at the bottom of all of the links for the show notes that we're going to discuss today again i keep saying show notes because that's going to be really important for what we discuss today because i we have a question we have a very important question amongst the 12th man is DK Metcalf being used correctly, or even better, is DK Metcalf a good receiver? Can he catch the ball? Is he good at contested catches? Is he on a Hall of Fame trajectory? Are the Seahawks wasting their time keeping him on the roster? Well, we can't answer all those questions because some of those are, well, yeah, he needs to get better. He needs to get better at catching the ball. But it's it's not always that simple. We are going to talk about the history of average depth of target going back to, I think we're going to start with 2015. We are going to talk about, is he good or not at dropping the ball? We are going to talk about where does he compare to other players as far as contested catches. And I'm going to preface. I wanted to record this episode yesterday and have it drop at 11 a.m. But I could not find enough data on contested catches. Whenever I make a statement about something... I give data. I give receipts. So I'm going to give the receipts that I have. And if you have more receipts to either back up or rebuke my claim, I want those. I can't afford Pro Football Focus's whatever, right? Their subscription. I I can't afford you know, such and such programs, right? Because those are the people that get paid to go analyze every single play for things like contested catches. I'm not going to go watch every single DK Metcalf play. But you know what? There are people get that paid to do that, and they happen to have posted some of that data. And recently, there was a gentleman who went on to Twitter or X, if you will, he's going to give it to you. And he posted some data and it created some fascinating conversation. I am not attacking this man. If you would like to watch his content, go for it. His name is Marcus Marcus Whitman, TFG underscore football. He's that franchise guy. He's got on YouTube 100,000 scrubs. He says he's an NFL, an NFL draft analyst. He's that franchise guy like Dat Frog Curtis. And he says, DK Metcalf has the most contested catch targets in the NFL over the last seasons, just targets, right? Targets with 55 and has only caught 16 of them, which is 29%. 
For comparison's sake, Drake London has the most. Drake London has 51 contested targets and 28 catches. 28 being considerably more than 16. He has 55%. This is a huge contributor for Seattle's inconsistencies in his opinion. And he has no sources. But the big thing is, he says he's an NFL and NFL draft analyst. And the reason that this is alarming to me is when you go to Pro Football Focus as of October 23rd, right? This was a, this was posted October 24th. Pro Football Focus they posted on 23rd that DK Metcalf he leads the league in terms of contested catches with 24. This year DK Metcalf leads the entire league with 24 catches. So what's the difference? Surely one source is getting this this contested catch data wrong. Well, let's let's take a look. We have Khalid El Sayed. Khalid joined Pro Football Focus in April of 2009 as a football analyst. Since then, he has served a uh, he's served in pivotal roles as chief operating officer and general manager to data collection. He currently works as vice president of data and lives in London, England. So, Khalid is that dog the only way that he could be more of that dog is if he was the president of data and he's been there since 2009 and if he says that dk metcalf has 24 catches amongst contested catches and then this dude that football guy who suddenly Twitter's not letting me post it. That franchise guy. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. If he's saying that there's only 16, something must be wrong. Right? How did Marcus Whitman get 16? How did he get 16? Well, let's take a look at his channel. He's that franchise guy. Let's learn more about him. All right. He does power rankings, predictions, everything in between. He's here for some football. He has a podcast, right? You can go listen to the podcast, the Patreon, Twitter, Twitch. He doesn't seem to be featured by any sources like Underdog Sports, which would provide him with that data. There's a lot of great agencies out there that could provide him with the data. He could have done the data himself, right? Maybe it's that. Let's look at his page. Well, he's he's got the Studs and Dudge channel, right? He's covering the NFC East, the NFC West, the NFC North. He's got power rankings, ranking every quarterback. How Jalen Hurts, the Eagles. NFL week power five, week five power rankings Jaden Daniels right reviewing every game from week one right he's got Patrick Mahomes there right more power rankings power rankings full prediction show right Chiefs deep dive Lions deep dive a month ago 49ers deep dive Eagles deep dive Jets Ravens Bengals that my point being has this man watched every single DK Metcalf snap? Has he watched every single Drake London snap? Does he know? Where did he get that number? Now, maybe he got it from po Pro Football Focus. Was he calculating it based off of 23 and 22? A lot of contested passes get thrown to DK Metcalf. It might have been possible that over the course of the 2021 season, 
sorry, 2022. In 2023 season, DK in fact only did catch 16, and it was really bad. But I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Because he didn't, he didn't post any of his sources. He also sped over the last two seasons. We're halfway through this season. And if we're halfway through this season, why are you posting about the last two seasons? The way that he posted it made it sound like DK Metcalf is not making any contested catches this year paired with last year. It kind of sounds like He's just posting a bunch of clickbait. And in fact, when I clicked on his video to learn a little bit more about him, he started off as a Madden football channel, right? So what type of analyst is he? He might just be using the word analyst. I mean, he's posted 1,500 videos. That takes a lot of work, right? No slouch on that. He's been doing it since 2016, right? He's obviously passionate about his what he does. He's called the franchise guy because he covers all the franchises over the NFL. If you want somebody who does power rankings and who covers every single franchise in the NFL, this is the guy for you. Right, I'm not shitting on that. If you want to go watch this man's channel, like and subscribe to his channel. He has 100,000 subscribers. He has a silver platinum YouTube symbol on the back of his videos. Go check him out. But he made a statement about DK Metcalf and Drake London. But it doesn't make sense. If you can prove to me that DK has only had 16 completed contested catches in 23 and 2022, then his statement makes sense. But only having 55 contested catches over the course of two years is a small amount considering DK's had over 200 catches. That's not including targets. And we're going to deep dive into that. We're going to deep dive into that as best as we can. All that to be said, as much as I don't like pro football focus, I don't like their grading system. But the way that they break down tape is meticulous. It's actually nauseating how perfect that they get their data, right? I am not going to give you the contested rate How? because he got 24 completed, completed catches on contested passes this year. I do not know how many com- contested passes were thrown to him this year because I cannot find that data. So I'm not going to make a number up to make DK sound better or worse because you know DK is my guy but I'm not going to make some number up because I do not have the receipt for it because that's not I'm not that type of person but if you're going to try to make an argument about a player or against a player you know because when I first saw that I'm like holy shit DK is doing way worse than I thought and I this this video originally was going to be about how DK needs to do better and we are going to get to that Because DK actually does need to do better. And I'm going to communicate that to you and why. But you gotta, you gotta bring data. Whenever you do an argument, you can't just make a statement. Now you, if you bring data and there is a disagreement about the data, Hey, I thought this was a dig route. No, I thought this was a post route. No, I thought this was an option route. Now we can have a conversation. But if you say 16 and then the person whose job literally is to just break down data constantly and has been doing it for 
seven years longer than you and does it professionally while you were playing Madden, they're probably a lot better at it than you are. So shout out to Khaled Isayed. I hope I'm pronouncing your name. Way to go, right? Follow them on Twitter. Hell, I'm going to follow them on Twitter. Follow them, right? This person's great. Because I would trust their what they have to say about data collection on DK Metcalf more than somebody who's on, you know, doing Madden, <laughs> right? Somebody who's a hot take artist. We are going to continue this conversation. NFL receiving leaders 2024. Passing leader, Geno Smith. He currently has... 1,985 yards, courtesy of Pro Football Reference. D, uh, Derek Henry, rushing leader, just for rec uh, for the record, he has 873 yards. Derek Henry, on a freaking stampede, might get over 2,000 yards again. I think he's gotten 2,000 yards before in his career. You put him next to Lamar Jackson, you can't cover both. Right, you can't give either of those guys MVP because you know they're the, who's the most valuable player on that team, right? They're both absurdly good. Um, but uh, if he 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 could hit 2,000 yards, Henry could probably break the the rushing record if he does what he normally does, which is get better as the season goes on. Jamar Chase has 620 yards receiving. He currently leads the NFL uh, in receiving yards. Why is my computer being so unhappy today? I don't know what is going on other than I have a bunch of data running in the background. Normally it's not this buggy. Um, here, what I'm gonna do is, oh, it's because it doesn't like it when I have the I'm going to have to figure that out. So Jamar Chase leads the NFL in yards with 620 yards. Chris Godwin, who went down in Tampa Bay with an injury, has 576 yards. DK Metcalf, third in the NFL with yards, has 568 yards receiving. The thing I want to point out, this is a career problem. Out of all wide receivers, DK Metcalf uh, is at the top but he he is tied for number one in wide receivers with the most fumbles he has two fumbles in the uh in the season right which is about par right he he is always fumbling the ball this is one of the biggest arguments against dk metcalf the other argument was contested catches he doesn't win on contested catches I don't know what he's been like in previous seasons. It always feels like he's a big guy. He can't go up there and win contested catches. This year in particular, he leads the league in contested catches. He's winning the most contested catches. But as far as fumbling, he's tied in the league for the wide receiver with the most fumbles. And I believe it. Because it's happened every fucking year since he's been drafted. Camden, you said that you weren't going to swear as much on the channel and you did it again. I keep using the, the, the fudge word, only I didn't say fudge. But every time I see DK Metcalf fumble the ball, I think fudge. It's like he just fudges the ball all over the field. And it costs us dearly. And there's a couple... My notes? <laughs> there's a couple fun stats I would like to give you. And maybe you can play at home. Catch percentage. We're going from first to worst. We're, well, worst. Here's how we're doing it. If you were the worst player, you ranked one. The higher your rank is, the, the least from worst you are. Right? So if you're either the worst player in the NFL at this, 
and if if you're ranked number five you're the fifth from the worst if that makes any sense it'll make sense as we go catch percentage we're going to talk about amari cooper brandon Ayuk, marvin harrison jameson williams the lions tyree kill and dk metcalf out of these players where do you think dk metcalf ranks right now obviously there are other receivers when we look at catch percentage there are other receivers like calvin ridley calvin ridley currently is the worst receiver in the nfl he is ranked number one as the worst receiver in catch percentage he is catching a third of all passes going his direction with 33.3 percent second worst is mac hollins who the hell is mac hollins well he's on the buffalo bills which we're playing this week he's got 35 percent so dk metcalf against an amari cooper who we're going up against this week he just got traded to the buffalo bills one of the best receivers in the nfl amari cooper a, a player that a lot of seahawks fans said that we probably should have traded for and is probably better than DK Metcalf. A Brandon Ayuk 49ers fan say that, that Brandon Ayuk is just DK Metcalf but better. Marvin Harrison Jr., first round pick in this year's draft. Jamison Williams, he just got suspended, right? He uh he was doing nothing the first few years of his career for the Lions. And then this year, he's been going on an absolute tear. He's their number one receiver. He goes up against us. Suddenly, Jared Goff has a perfect game. We can't do anything to stop uh, Jammo, right? Turns out he is probably jamming a bunch of steroids into his system. They said that he had performance-enhancing drugs in his system. They didn't say what that was. He denied it. Of course, he did. And he's currently serving up a suspension. But Jamison Williams is on this list after going on an absolute tear this season. And then, of course, we have Tyreek Hill, who last year was in MVP conversations. We're going to talk more about Tyreek Hill as this video goes on. So, Calvin Ridley, the worst receiver in the NFL when it comes to catch percentage. Marvin Harrison Jr., when it comes to catch percentage is the 11th worst receiver in the NFL with 46.5%. 46.5%. Well, he is a rookie, right? But he's right next to Brandon Cooks, who's at 13%. And if you look, Amari Cooper is right there at 48.3%. Forty-three, forty-eight point three percent for Amari Cooper. Now, granted, Amari Cooper has been playing with Deshaun fucking Deshaun fudging Watson. <laughs> Deshaun fudging Watson, and he did play a game. Did he play a game? He is on the Bills now. I don't know if he played a game with the Bills. Maybe he did. But he's on the Bills now. He spent most of this season with Deshaun Watson. So having a quarterback throwing at your ankles or off in the distance, right? The accuracy of the quarterback matters a lot when it comes to catch percentage. But his catch percentage is really poor right now. When you continue on this list, ranked at 22nd worst receiver in catch percentage we have Brandon Ayuk when the ball is thrown his way 53.2 percent of the time he catches it all right when you go down to 25 you got Jamison Williams Jamo the guy who's been having this hell of a season right he started off the season high three touchdowns 361 yards but he's got a 56.7% catch rate. Which is not good, right? To be clear, none of these catch percentages are good. He's the, out of 131 receivers, 
right? Out of 131 receivers, you're the 25th best in catch percentage. That's not good. Now, granted, the, the more targets you get, the higher chance you have of, of having more drops. So if you get two balls thrown your way and they're both swing routes, and then those are the only balls thrown your way during the season, or you're the fifth receiver and you're only brought out in empty and nobody's covering you so you're the check down, sure, your catch percentage is probably going to be really, really high. If you only have two balls thrown your way, you catch one of them, the other one is thrown out of bounds and you get, you know, it's you, you, you just didn't have a chance to bring it in. And so you have a 50%. That doesn't really say anything. But based off of the frequency that these guys are having the balls thrown their way, these are not good catch percentages. We can agree on that. These are not good catch percentages. We'll continue with this at 29. 29. Sorry. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, uh, it says 28 here, but Amari Cooper, because he's on two teams. No, 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 no. It is 28. At 28, <laughs> Tyreek Hill. Dun, 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 dun. I didn't read my own handwriting. Tyreek Hill, 57.1% of his passes have been caught. Just under 60%. And this dude was up for an MVP last year. He's got 294 yards, one touchdown. One thing to remember, Tua Tunga Vailoa, out. Uh, it sounds like he's trying to return to practice this week. I don't know what's going on with that. Skylar Thompson, terrible, out. After that, he had like Tim Boyle, and then they had Tyler Huntley. That's all been bad. Right, the quarterbacks that have been throwing the ball at Tyreek Hill have been bad. He's also trading snaps with uh, Galloway, I believe, on the other side. Uh, he's trading snaps with a chain as far as targets. So they've been throwing a lot of stuff underneath to a chain. And then Mostert's been also getting things underneath, right? But, but Tyreek Hill, when the ball is going his way, is not catching the ball. Finally, at... 30 we have DK Metcalf DK Metcalf 57.4 percent of the catches uh, of, of passes are being caught he has 568 yards right so with only three touchdowns right and that's the absurd thing that that's the absurd thing about DK Metcalf is He's always, and I mean always, had a bad catch percentage. And we're going to deep dive into that as far as a league thing, right? And not just a DK thing, but the entire league. He's always had a bad catch percentage. But then he ends up being number three in total yardage. How? How do you have such a bad... It's not just targets. It's not just targets. If you go to targets... T -t -t target Give it to me. Oh my god. Come on, come on. He's fifth in total targets. He's fifth in total targets. Garrett Wilson... Currently leads the NFL with 76 targets. He has 460 yards. Uh, Wandale Robinson has 67 targets with 303 yards. Chris Godwin, right, the guy who is number two in total yardage, he has 62 targets, which is one more than DK Metcalf. He has 576 yards. Drake London, who got compared to earlier, has 62 targets and he has 491 yards and then DK Metcalf has 561 so it's not just targets right DK ooh sorry I ate a pizza DK is eating when it comes to yards and it's not just that 
its receptions. DK Metcalf is 11th in total receptions. Jamar Chase, right, 9th in receptions, has 620 yards. Jamar Chase is an absolute freak. Chris Godwin, he has 50 receptions. That's how he got the 576 yards. And his catch percentage, I believe, is up there in the NFL. Right, um, all right, this includes tight ends too, but uh, he's got 80.6 percent of his catches. Right, we got uh, Garrett Wilson, he's got 60.5 percent of his catches have been made. Uh, when we look at Jamar Chase, he's got 81.3. So the two guys ahead of DK Metcalf have 80.6 percent of their catches are being made with 576 yards. And then Jamar Chase, 81.3% of his catches are being made with 620 yards. And DK Metcalf is down here at fucking 57.4% of his catches, 568 yards. If DK Metcalf was at 80% catch rate, which is really, really, really good, dude would have over a thousand yards at the rate he's going. He would have... 800 yards already it would be absurd if he could just catch the freaking ball if he could just catch the freaking ball and he doesn't do it but also it's not that simple it's not that simple because I want to show you something let me show you something. Here is Tyreek Hill. Uh, I brought up the wrong one. Here is Tyreek Hill. From 2023, this is his MVP season, courtesy of 2020, uh, of Pro Football Reference. And I want to bring up something in particular. His drops. He had 12 drops in the 16 games that he played he had a drop percentage of seven when we go to DK Metcalf 2024 he has had um, five uh, four drops all right this is 2024 right let me make sure I got this right yes 2024 he has had four drops on the season with a 6.6 .6 drop percentage, which is just under where that MVP season was. And so how many drops do you expect a player to have on the season? Now that we're here, I'm actually kind of curious. Let's go to, let's go to Chris Godwin because Chris Godwin had a, such a good um, percentage. We're gonna go to um, advanced 2024. All right, I'm going to show you how the cookie crumbles drop percentage. Chris Godwin has two drops on the season with a drop percentage of 3.2. Right, so that's a big difference in, um, in catch percentage. If, if, if you, instead of having four drops on the season, had two drops on the season you know your 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 yardage is probably going to be higher your catch percentage is probably going to be higher but it's not going to bring you up to 80 percent they're used differently they're used differently what's the big difference we're going to talk all about it average depth of target through seven games Chris Godwin's average depth of target was 5.7.7 yards average depth of target for Tyreek Hill on his MVP season 10.8 this is actually insane and we're gonna discuss why this is insane in a moment DK Metcalf this year average depth per target 13.5 when the ball is going towards DK Metcalf it is beyond a first down this isn't average depth of a completion 
This is when the ball is getting thrown his 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 way. It is 13 and a half yards. Right? He's not getting the ball at the nine yard line and picking up some yak. It's when the ball is going into his hands. If he has a chance to drop it, it's 13.5. The ball has to travel farther than Chris Godwin. And what did I mention earlier? If the ball gets thrown to you on a swing route, there's a much higher chance that nobody's going to be covering you. It's going to be easier to catch the ball. Which brings us to summersports.com. Average depth of target carries less weight than it used to. I'm going to try to debunk my own statement because I found this fascinating because average depth of target used to matter a whole lot. We're going to talk about all this stuff, but I want to come up with their conclusion. Again, this is going to be in the description below, but I want to get to their ultimate point and then we're going to walk backwards on it. What their statement basically means while there's positivity correlated to the belief that the higher depth of target uh, leads to significantly more passing success, aka if you're throwing 5.7 yards to Chris Godwin, you're going to have less EPA than throwing 13.5 yards to DK Metcalf. That correlation is still there to an extent but not as strong as it has been the last couple of seasons. The average depth of target is something useful, as are most data points, but somewhat flawed due to the influence situation has on it, such as like Tampa 2, or if DK Metcalf is being thrown the ball and he's running X and he's on the sideline, there's a higher chance that the ball is going to be thrown to him and he's going to catch it with his feet on the boundary, which means he didn't drop the ball. He's just on the boundary. Or Geno Smith is trying to avoid a sack. DK's on the boundary. Geno's going to overthrow the ball. People are going to say DK didn't win the contested catch. Geno never intended for DK to win the contested catch. A quarterback can also contribute to the influence on their own average depth of target because better quarterbacks should be leading more often. When discussed, using an adjusted version or keeping in mind what is expected of the passer is important. Okay, what does this mean as far as numbers? Here we go. The average depth of target in EPA per, pla uh, per pass. So here are the players at the top who have good EPA. If you are under this line here, you have bad EPA. Average depth of target is this direction, right? We have 10 yards here. We have six yards here. Matt Ryan was throwing for six yards. Marcus Mariota, he was throwing for like 12 yards. Russell Wilson, he was throwing for like 8.9 yards. Okay, Zach Wilson was throwing for nine. Back in the day, if you were throwing, and by back in the day, I mean 2015, 2014. If you were throwing for nine yards an attempt, if that was the quarterback's average, nine yards an attempt, that was considered an elite quarterback. This was like the Andy Dalton 2016 MVP campaign. He was averaging nine yards a, an attempt because that meant that you were throwing for almost a first down per, per pass. And this was before EPA was a big thing. Geno Smith, this is uh, 2022, right? This was the year when he was healthy. And when we were like, yeah, he's that dog. He's pulling that, that Drew Brees year. He's down here at like seven... 0.7 yards an attempt and his EPA is just up there with Kirk Cousins maybe he was at like 7.8 yards an attempt right he's right up there 
Brock Purdy off the charts, EPA. Pat, uh, Patrick Mahomes off the charts, EPA. Right? So what you'll notice is that the best passers, other than like Tua and Josh Allen, who are way over here on their own, best passers are all clumped over here. Let's make it easier for you to understand. Right? You can see it here. Tua and Josh Allen are over there, but for the most part, everything is clumped over here. If you're throwing about seven yards, your EPA is pretty damn high. Right? There's a good chance your EPA is right here. Bad quarterbacks just kind of clumped together. And then you got a downward slope, right? The more the higher your yardage goes, right, you, you start reaching towards this nine yards, your EPA starts to drop. The best quarterbacks in the league who are making the playoffs are right in here at about the seven yard mark. In 2021, it was about the eight yard mark. All the best players with EPA, it's very easier for you to see it, right? There's just a little bubble right there. Sure, you got the seven yard mark right there. That might have been a reason why, why you could see players start to pull this direction. They wanted to reach that mark because it was one of the highest at the time. But all the players are, for the most part, clumped there around eight. If you go back to 2014, though, all the players are around nine. About nine yards an attempt. Right? 2015, the highest EPA marks. About nine yards an attempt. About 10 yards an attempt. They're all the way up here. Right? Cover three. Right, if you're if you are only have a high safety and then a corner over here and a corner over there, you have a lot of players, specifically players that are trying to adapt to the run pass option, or teams that are trying to do what Peyton Manning's offense were doing. You have a lot of tight end seams. Defenses were not ready to prepare for it, and so they were loading the box underneath to stop the run. And there was a lot of deep passes in the corners. Right, because there was not enough defenders over the top. When you get over to the 21 and 22 seasons, you now have two safety looks again. So you have quarterbacks throwing underneath, which were leading towards more EPAs per pass. 2020 though, look at this. You get the nine yard passes again, 10 yard passes. You can see it's all shifted to the side, all quarterbacks. The reason for this being Defenses could not practice in the preseason. All quarterbacks, for the most part, were really good. And they were able to throw the ball deep until like later in the season, like week 12, when defenses finally got their crap together. But it's really hard to play defense, and especially when you can't practice. And so they were just chucking the ball. 2019, it's all down there, right? But I want you to notice these short passes. Short passes, right? 2017, it's all spread out. 2016, that nine yard mark. Let's make this really clear. Passing frequency by air bucket. Uh, let's make sure I'm on the right screen. I sure am. Look at behind the line of scrimmage. These are swing passes. These are bubble screens. These are little pitch plays. In 2017, 19.7. Which was that year in particular? 2019. Let's take a look at 2019. Okay, 2019 is the same as 2018. Right? We saw this we saw this bump almost an entire percentage point from 19.7% of all passing plays by air yards, right? Go from 19.7 to 20.5, 20.5, 20.6. It stayed there for three years, and then it jumped up another percentage point. After the 2020 season, what happened here, teams switched from going to one high, three high safety, odd numbers, right? They went back to two high safety, four high safety, 
right? They, they started covering more over the top to make sure that deep passes weren't occurring. You can even see here, right? The frequency stays the same right around the sticks. Frequency stays about the same underneath the sticks. But if you look at this 31 plus percentage, 4.6%, 4.3%, 4.5%, then it starts to drop 4.1%, 4.2%, 4%. The slow crawl down for all passes that are 31 or more yards. You can see it also with 26 to 30, it starts at 25, goes to 23, 23, 23, 23, 2.2, 2.3. You have these years where it's 4.1%, 4.1% with 21 to 25 yards, and then it goes back down. But the the elite the elite mark was about nine yards. This little bubble right here, and now we're at a low down here at 18.1. And the best the best quarterbacks are playing like right here in this little bubble. And DK Metcalf, he's playing right here. This doesn't show everything though. This doesn't this doesn't really hit it home, right? Cuz these numbers aren't showing the in between numbers. Right? Cuz 9 yards, 13 yards, 7 yards. I don't think this is giving it justice. So I'm going to show you this. The correlation between average depth of target and EPA pass by uh, by season. Average uh, depth of target EPA correlation goes this way and then this way. It's the lowest since 2014. Look at that. What this means is that in 2020, when teams were throwing the ball in 2020, the deeper you passed, the higher the chance that you were gonna get a good EPA. All right? Let's look at uh, let's look at this chart again. In 2020, if you were throwing the ball deep, there was a good chance you were gonna get a high EPA. Boom, and then it and then it evened out, and then this year it's the lowest it's been in forever. 2014. Right, we're back down here in the middle. So, what does this all mean? All right, where's 2014? See how it's like right there? <laughs> it's right there in the same 2016. It's about the same right there in the middle, right? The league is cyclical. You have a few years or a decade where it's a passing league. Then defenses switch the way that they're built and, and train and call plays to stop the passing plays. And by doing that, you chop off a limb and you say, well, let it, them run on us. And then teams go, well, shit, we should be running the ball. So then they start running the ball and they change their scheme and they start drafting and doing signings so that they can run the ball. And then teams go, oh, shit, we're being run all over. We should build a team that can stop the run. So then they'd stop the run and all the teams start doing that because a really good team starts stopping the run. And then everyone goes, well, we should do that too. And then we should build a passing team because everyone is stopping the run now instead of trying to stop the pass. The league is cyclical. So what does that mean for DK Metcalf? Well, as we established, DK Metcalf, 13.5 average death per target. If you increase your depth per target the quarterback's completion percentage naturally is going to drop off. 
And not only that, your EPA, the likelihood that you're going to score points on that drive, the likelihood that you're going to have a successful play right now is at a 10 year low. The lowest it's been since 2014. So if a pass is being thrown at DK Metcalf at 13.5, statistically it's the lowest it's been since 2013, and he is third in the NFL in total yardage. So he's doing all right. But let's talk about completion percentage. His catch rate, for example. At 13.5, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes in the 2018 and 2019 seasons. I believe it's 2018 and 2019 season. No, it's from 2018 to 2021 for him. This is based off of the 2018 and 2019 average, 13.5. They had a completion average at about, let's say, 61. 62 to 63% if we're really being generous. Maybe we'll give it to 65 for Patrick Mahomes. 65% at 13.5. If we go to 2021, this is also courtesy of Sharp Football Stats. 2021 for Tom Brady. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? I want... There we go. There we go. 2021. Right, so this is when things started to drop off a little bit. The NFL average was 60%. Tom Brady at at 2021... Uh, he was at like, let's give him 20, 65%. Patrick Mahomes, he was down here at 55%. And as we established DK Metcalf this year is at 57.4%, which is like in between the NFL average. The reason I'm going for 2021, why? Because this is, this is when sharp football stats stopped calculating this. All right, I would do 2023 or 2024 on this if I could. It's when they stopped calculating it. So mass data is important. But if we go over like their this four-year span, um, you know, 65%, right? At, when they are at their peak, 65%. He's not reaching 65%. And if we look at Jamar Chase and Goodwin, well, Jamar Chase, we've already assessed that um, his catch percentage is currently at do 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 do. Well, Chris Godwin is at 80.6%, and Javante Williams, that's a running back. My apologies. I apologize. Here, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to yards. Uh, Jamar Chase is at 81.3%, right? So those two players are just absolutely absurd. Right, they'd be way up here. But you got to remember that Goodwin has a, you know, average depth of target of 57 so he actually should be up in this range, which is still higher than the Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady average. And then Jamar Chase, we don't even know. You want to find out? Let's find out. Let's find out together. Game logs. We'll go to 2024. Let's see how Jamar Chase is doing this season. His... He has two drops on the season. All right, so he he also has two less drops than uh, than Mr. DK Metcalf. 
Uh, and then average depth of target, 9.3. So he's got about four yards less than DK Metcalf. So he's down here. And he's up in this catch percentage. So both of those guys are, are off of the charts of Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. Who are ar arguably the GOATs. All right. And then DK Metcalf. He's down in this area. Which is uh, just below the national average. Which is not great. But also... As we have seen, the farther you go, the less accurate you're going to be. Now, here's the argument the Seahawks fans need to be making. Let's start with Russell Wilson. Loading. I apologize for all of this loading. Okay. Why did you switch to Kyler Murray? <laughs> Would you switch to Kyler Murray? Russell Wilson. Give me all. So from 2018 to 2021, you can see Russell Wilson. Um, the farther away he throws, the less accurate he becomes, right? But he is higher than the national average over the 2018 to 21 seasons. Uh, one of those is drastically skewed. I'll show you why. Um, but when you go to the 13.5, right, he is also above that 57. But he is right there at 60. Let's show you 2021. This is the year Russell Wilson got hurt. He was really bad at short yardage throws. But, but like anything above 35 yards or less, there's a 50% chance that that shit was going to get caught. So realistically, Russell Wilson was really, really good. If he was throwing the ball 20 yards or farther, that, that was probably going to get caught. It was really good, right? Look at this. And so this is the reason why his you know, average depth of target percentage being caught was so good in the trail end. It was because of the 2021 season. When you compare Geno Smith, again, we don't have 2022 for sharp football, but in his brief period in 2021, which is what won him the job ultimately, he is above the national average pretty considerably the entire time. And when you compare it to Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady, right? Other than when Patrick Mahomes is throwing deep, where Patrick is pretty consistently above the national average, that's basically what Geno Smith was doing. But it was up until about 30 yards of distance. And when you go to 13.5, right? It was about 65% completion. And again, I wish I had the 2024. I wish I had 2023, something other than 2021. But um, compared to Russell Wilson, considerably better. This to be said, Geno Smith is an extremely accurate quarterback. And he's throwing to Tyler Lockett who is increasing his completion percentage so much higher than DK Metcalf's catch rate, who is, should be bringing that down. This completion percentage in 2021 should have been higher. He should have been considerably higher. Geno Smith should have over 2,000 yards right now if DK Metcalf's catch percentage was up in the 80%. Let's take it back. If DK Metcalf was just at the national average of at 13.5 yards of depth, he was getting 60% of his catches instead of 57%. That would be considerably better. But he's not dropping the ball. 
So the argument that he's dropping the ball at a considerable rate this year, he only has two more drops than both of the two guys that are ahead of him in total yardage. And one of them has considerably more targets than him, but at 5.7 yards, you know, per target. And then the other guy, it's about the same, a few more targets than him, but at about four yards less per target. The big difference is Jamar Chase is catching 80% of his targets and DK Metcalf is catching 57% of his targets. If DK was catching 80% of his targets, which is the thing that people decry him on other than contested catches, DK would probably have 800 yards right now, which is absurd. Actually absurd considering where we are in the season. The argument though that he's not making contested catches, he's actually leading the league in contested catches made this year. The argument that he keeps dropping the ball, we can't make that argument this year. What we can make this year is that he keeps fumbling the ball. He keeps fumbling the ball. If you say he's dropping the ball too much, last year he had less uh, drops than the guy who was up for an MVP in Tyreek Hill. And he has about the same drop percentage as Jamar Chase and company this year. No, that actually that's not true, I apologize. He, he, he has about twice as much, right? And it's because he's only dropped four compared to their two. It's a difference between 3% drop rate and 6% drop rate. Let me make sure I get that right. Yeah, he's got a 6.6% drop rate. Uh, Goodwin has a 3.2% drop rate. So there are some truths to DK Metcalf. He does not get his feet in to secure the ball along the boundary in that 49ers game he was a toe away from a touchdown we also constantly see him be the target on the border and he does he like will get the ball but it's it's out of bounds right we will see him try to catch the ball and he gets bopped right but those don't count it as drops those get counted as like passes defensed where somebody comes in and whacks the ball out of his hands those aren't drops straight up drops he has four on the season contested catches he's gotten better this year he worked on it in the offseason so much so that he leads the NFL in them however I preface and I prefaced before I do not know what that percentage is because the reason I wanted to post this video yesterday but I couldn't find the source I cannot find data on how many contested catches he has attempted this year so he might have 24 but they attempted 100 which right that I'm just throwing that number out there but 24 catches he has 35 receptions on the year so he's had 11 where he, they weren't contested and I kind of believe that he's made some really good catches this year with guys all over him and people are dragging him down in Seahawks Twitter because they're repeating old narratives so I will not bring in a receipt that I don't have and say well he's he's got a higher contested rating than ever I will say though that pro football focus whose job is it to collect data and their vice president of data collection says that he has led the NFL in contested catches with 24 and he has 35 receptions on the year with 35 which means 11 of those have not been contested catches 
Now, as far as targets go, he has 61 targets. So how many of those were contested catches? I don't know. And I don't have the receipts to show you what those are, so I'm not going to make some statement and post it on Twitter. But if you ever find somebody on Twitter that posts a number that you like, maybe follow up on that data. Because that's what I did. I wanted to see maybe, maybe I have not been hard enough on DK. I, I wanted to absorb new information. And it all it did was lead me on this rabbit hole, realizing, because I didn't know that DK was leading the NFL in contested catches. All Marcus Whitman, this individual, all he did by showing me this was trigger me to go down a rabbit hole trying to learn more about whether or not his statement was accurate. And all it did was teach me that instead, I don't know what he was talking about, but actually DK Metcalf is leading the league in contested catches, not having 16 contested catches. I don't know where Marcus Whitman got that resource. I don't know where he got that data. So don't believe everything you read on the internet, kids. We were taught that in the 90s. Now, if Marcus Whitman is talking about 2023 and 2022, he needs to preface that. He did say over the last two seasons, but DK Metcalf has had 24 just this season. I don't think that number is accurate and I don't we're halfway through this season so why would he post this now is he just doing it for clickbait because that seems to be what his YouTube channel is about this isn't to drag on to him it's to say how is this relevant to DK Metcalf today instead what we should be talking about how he spent his offseason improving his ability to do contested catches, and he's kicking ass at it. Or the argument should be, maybe because he's having the ball thrown at him a lot, maybe he's having the ball thrown at him more for contested catches than normal, so he's getting more opportunities, and that's it. But I don't have that data, and I would love to have it. If you have that data, you can leave it in the comments below. I would appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to First Kick Seahawks, the show where we prepare you for the first kick of every play by game day. We are getting ready for the Seahawks-Bills game, which should be tomorrow. I'm recording this on Friday evening. This will post 11 a.m. on Saturday, the day before the game. I appreciate you all taking the time to be here. I know I can get a little feisty when I'm defending my guy, but also I get excited talking about these sort of things. Um, there was a tagline. I'm working on a new tagline for how to end my uh, my uh, Seahawk, first kick Seahawk streams. Let's see if I can remember what it was. Um, kick it with you next time or, or something like that. Hold on. I want to get it right. It's my show. I can I can drag this on as long as I want to. Um, <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. I remember now. This has been First Kick Seahawks. Let's kick it again soon. Enjoy your weekend. Let's go Seahawks.